Hello, welcome to OS Engine Tutorial 116. In the last video, 115, I show you how to compare the dynamic uh, world uh, dataset with uh, ESA and uh, Esri dataset. So those are basically just one time period uh, in 2020. And one of the biggest advantages of a um, dynamic uh, world land cover dataset is that it, uh, it has classified pretty much all the Sentinel-2 images with the cloud coverage less than 35%. So you have a lot more images. And so in that case, we can use those images to create a time series uh, lane cover. So you can actually see the changes, not just one time period. And this is what we are going to uh, cover in this video. So after the uh, tutorial 115, I also developed uh, an interactive, uh, interactive web app uh, called Geospatial. So you can, uh, the link is also in the description. And so this one allows you to compare the data set side by side without coding. So you can just launch the web app and they can come here. You can take a look. You can compare the differences or, uh, between these three data set, uh, the uh, dynamic uh, world data set, uh, the uh, ESA and also the ESRI. So you have three uh, different types of data set that you can compare. And if you take a look, right, as I mentioned in the video, the dynamic world data set um, visually looks uh, very appealing, but uh, the details are not as good as the uh, European Space Agency land cover data set. You can see it's a lot more detail. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, you can take a look in here, right? And this is the laser. So uh, this one here, because it's not Jupiter Noble, it, so it can only show one laser uh, on the right. Uh, it cannot show the one on the left. But you're welcome to choose here. You can you can change uh, the laser but you can only show one or at once. So this one here right now represents on the left side, right? Uh, you are also welcome to compare uh, the data set, for example, with Esri, right? And take a look. So the Esri and the dynamic uh, world data set looks pretty similar because they are both based on Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 and also deep learning, but it's a lot more generalized. So it does not really, um, so, compared to the ESA 10 meter resolution. So just want you to uh, keep it in mind, okay? And so every time if you change something, it's going to return to this uh, latitude and longitude. So if you, if you want something else, you need to make sure that you uh, change this one. For example, I can change to uh, positive, then it should be a location around Asian countries. And uh, the dynamic water set takes a little bit longer because it's not uh, it's doing some processing to actually to show you the data set so you might need to uh, be patient but the uh, the other two data sets are already pre-computed so it's already there all right so this is about the web app and uh, next let's go to gmap to download the novel example so on the left side click uh, tutorials and then scroll down to the end click uh, number 116 and open the notebook so and then you can download the notebook to your computer and open in Jupyter Notebook. So this is what it looks like. And uh, this goes through the example. Uh, the idea is that uh, we want to fully utilize the time series of the dynamic world data set based on Sentinel-2. So they can create, for example, every year, every quarter, every month or, or every week. So it's up to you how you want to uh, uh, create what kind of temporal frequency you want. And so essentially, you just need one line of code. You can create the time series. And so this one was just implemented uh, yesterday. So make sure that you update a GMAP to the latest version. So make sure that uh, run pip install and then uh, test you um, capital uh, and then just execute. You should be able to update uh, GMAP to the latest version and make sure that you also uh, restart the kernel and to take effect. Otherwise, uh, you might not uh, have this function. Okay. So first, let's uh, import the library and then uh, create an interactive map. Uh, we also add a uh, hybrid, so set a uh, Google hybrid uh, base map so that you can compare the data set um, with the link cover. After that, uh, you can simply draw a rectangle. So if you don't draw a rectangle, or you can do a draw a rectangle anywhere uh, around the globe, uh, you can or just use the default ROI that I'm setting here. So this is a bounding box, uh, west, south, and uh, east north so the lower left corner and also the upper right corner so this is how you can do that but you're welcome to maybe for example i can just simply draw a rectangle so uh, pan and zoom to any location around the globe you'd like and then draw a rectangle or polygon that's it 
after that <coughs> you can specify the date range uh, so here you, i am specifying the starting date uh, 2017 january 1st to 2021 december 31st keep in mind this one we're using the sentinel ha uh, harmonized data set so it includes sentinel uh, 2a and 2b so 2a uh, was launched in 2015 and then 2b was in 2017 so in 2015 and 2016 the data might not be as dense as what we have right now so now we have uh two to five days uh tempo frequency so every two to five days but um before that it was only 10 days so make sure that um you specify if you really uh your area only covers small area you can change it to an earlier date but uh, if there's a large area you're going to have some empty area after the, uh, the uh, after you do the uh, com composite the imagery because it doesn't have global coverage in every two to five days okay so this is just basically just specify whatever you want uh starting and end date and after that just one line of code here gmap dot uh dynamic world time series right and you can press shift tab on your keyboard to bring up the documentation so there are a bunch of parameters you can specify uh the reason uh, basically the reason of interest the starting date and the end date and the frequency so in this case we by default the frequency is by year but you can customize um year months and date um but uh, don't try our mini seconds because you don't have that high uh, temporal frequency so uh year months is um I, I believe you can also do by quarter uh, so you can just try quarter and job empty means uh because some date for example monthly or daily you don't have imagery so it might be empty uh you can do that and so the date format is when it's creating the time series it's going to uh set a property basically uh, uh appropriately in the image so you can specify what kind of date format you want by default it's just year months and date so if you're creating for example monthly imagery it will be just um year and then months and then uh all one so because it's always the first day and after that uh this one is important return type what kind of things you want to return so uh it can be huge so look at pair look at the uh previous video uh 114 um i already show you how like what that's mean for each one so you have four different types of uh, imagery that you can return and after that after that it's written as an image collection so let's take a look so oh uh start there because we haven't executed yet <clears throat> right and so once you have the image collection uh keep in mind here is pretty quick because um google sending does not really do the computation until you request the imagery although you compute and calculate it reassign to available it's just like it's not really computed yet until you display the layer on the client side or export the data otherwise it even if you have any error you can show up in here so that's why we need to display this one so we set our visualization parameters and we also add the first image so in this case here uh, if you want to see how many images in there you can image dot size uh, low case and don't get info so this one is going to show you how many images in there so i will expect five images right so 17 18 19 20 21 so five images every year you have one image because the temporal frequency we set as a uh, year so annual temporal uh a annual length cover data set and take a look we just add the first one so we just can we we, we want to visualize just the first image so take a look again um because it's doing the computation and also i think it's not uh clipped to the rectangle so if you want you can do that as well but uh let me remove the clear the ri so that it's a bit uh, clear and you can maximize the map so take a look full screen now you see uh the link cover data set so this one right now is just using the uh first imagery is class the class means you get the original classified imagery so it's not huge straight yet uh, just classify imagery because sometimes you might want to inspect the pixel value so on all right corner here shows you the length of the laser right so zero all the way to eight if you want you can click the inspector and then click your mouse on the map um, because again this one is the original class so you can see the value like label zero and this one here uh red color label six so label six uh now here right and this one is three to be at one right so this is how you can get the original 
uh, classify imagery. And then if you want to do further analysis, you can export this imagery using uh, EE export image, right? So this is how you can get that. And, and the nice thing is it is original. So you get the original data that you can for an uh, analysis, but uh, visually it is not as good as um, the hue set. So the, what you need to do here, if you want is just to change this one. So you need, just need to so here. I can change to uh, hue set and then again it's going to be the same image size but since it is uh, hue set so in this case we don't need the visualization uh, because it's already um, visualized and then just uh, take a look at now you should have the hue set right so again it's um, very dynamic it's very easy to use uh, just one line of code you get uh, the imaging and then you can compare oh by the way i add uh, two lasers but so you can remove one if you want and so let me maximize a little bit and from here you can oh by the way so now if you already visualize you don't get the original pixel value you'll be just rgb so this has um it's kind of meaningless because it does not really represent uh the class so you cannot get the pixel value after it has been visualized so if you want you can take a look at this Right, you can compare the data set, uh, but keep it in mind the background of Google Earth imagery uh, is not the one used to classify. So it's based on less Sentinel 2 imagery. Uh, if you want to get the original imagery, you can look at um, video tutorial 114 uh, showing you how to get imagery. Okay, so this is how you can um, get the uh, imagery. Let me go back again. Let me re re redone this because um, it has two lasers, so you kind of. Uh, no looking good and let me show you one more time all right so this is how you can add just one imagery uh, to the map and you can take a look uh, and then see if you like it or not after that we can use the time series inspector so this function uh, you can use this to create a split panel map side by side let me show you what does that really mean so again uh, the parameter you need passing is an image collection for the left side an image collection for the right side and then uh, press shift on your keyboard uh, to bring up the help documentation so that you have a better understanding in this case we have an image collection of five lane cover images and because we want to compare them side by side so on the left side is an image collection on the right side is also an image collection uh, they don't have to be the same if you don't specify they will look exactly the same uh, on the left and the side and the right and the left name you can provide a list to be show up in the drop down list so take a look at this one the drop down list right 2017 20 all the way to 2020 and uh because we specify the date format if you want a different date format you can you can also specify here and also the visualization parameters right so this is how you want to um visualize and this one because we use uh uh i think we need to uh, change to class otherwise yeah sorry about that because uh for the hue shade uh, we don't need the visualization so if you want uh let me see here actually so i think i don't need to change because it's huge shape. you can i can also do that as well so just use this one uh don't set the visualization parameters unless you are using the class then you need to visualize because the class will be just values ranging from zero to eight uh it has no color so now oh i need to um i think i need to read one otherwise uh, it won't work Anyway, let me refer it back and run from above. So basically, we are creating the class imagery, and then we have five time periods on the left side, on the right side, and then we can just use the drop down list. So again, by default, it will just uh, it doesn't show you any data layer. So I can select 2017, and the other one select 2021. Take a look, uh, pretty nicely. No coding. So uh, once you have this you can select the map so you can compare the differences it might not look too much of a difference when you zoom out uh, but if you zoom in it might be some tiny differences right and so you can see here vegetation and uh, uh, grass you can also add a laser uh, I believe you can add a laser oh, I'm not sure why it doesn't show up it's supposed to show up here or oh, it might be because it's uh, covered by uh, the, the data layer so anyway so take a look at uh, in terms of the lane cover, uh, the uh, build up area, the red color, they do pretty much the same because uh, there's not much urban growth in this area. Uh, this is in 
uh, Wisconsin uh, medicine. And, uh, but in terms of vegetation, right? Uh, forest and grass, it's something that um, confusing uh, because I, I don't expect to see so much change in terms of uh, vegetation and grass. But this is one of the things that deep learning might not do very well because uh, it cannot really distinguish. All right, so take a look at this here. Again, this is just a comparison visually, but you're welcome to do quantitative analysis if you want to compare what's the differences between these two lane cover. But this gives you an idea how you can create a time series very easily um, just using one line of code. Again, this is using just annually, but you can do quarterly, you can do monthly, you can do weekly. Um, but if you're doing monthly, um, you need to multiply by 20. I was 12, so you get 60 images in here it might be too long and uh, if your reason of interest is too big uh, google assembly might not allow you so you need to basically reduce the time range anyway so this is how you can visualize the original uh, class imagery and the next one i'm going to show you here is using the uh, hue set so they can compare the hue set right the, again the same function uh, the same ri the starting day and the end day and also the return type is the hue set and we are going to use the same thing so Lastly, we add a laser, and this one should look a little bit better than the last one because it visually looks uh, much more interesting because you overlay on top of a hue shade, right? And again, select 2017, uh, select 21. Uh, the laser is at the lower right corner. So now if you zoom in a little bit, right? So this looks better. And again, you can compare the differences, right? You can not much. It looks like the urban uh, area grows a little, grew a little bit, right? Take a look. I'm not sure if you can see that, right? For example, in this area, you can see right now it turns to uh, to red color, right? And the vegetation and the forest also change a little bit. Uh, you can move out to other locations. So, but you can change any other year. For example, 2020, it's going to low uh, in a couple of seconds again. Uh, the data layer is already there, but it just takes time to load. So now you have, you can compare 2020, and I think this one is uh, snow and ice. So you can see uh, some of those actually in here. But you need some uh, validation, so you can look in the original data set and see if this uh, good or not. But uh, this one requires minimal efforts that you can create length cover time series 10 meter resolution uh any any case uh any location on our globe right and after that if you want you can export the images uh to your computer to do further analysis so this one shows you like um length cover by uh, by year so if they say you want to do it like monthly but keep in mind you might have a lot of cloud because it does not classify images with cloud coverage more than 35 percent so you need to make sure that you understand the point so here because it's if you want to change to monthly you, you better change the start and end date so let me come back to here just to show you one example i'm not sure uh if it works or not but uh for example i can change to just 2021 so for example you want to look at the length cover change slow out in year by month so this is what you can do again uh just change the frequency so copy this one here and then frequency uh, equal to months and so for the date uh, format you might want to add this one so mm uh, I think it's uh, uh, should be I'm not quite sure is it uppercase or lowercase uh, uppercase so it will be mm and then take a look uh, if it runs into error sometimes it, uh, because the computation is too too much yeah it works right so now you have january all the way to december 2021 select the first one select the next one okay again as expected because january uh, is the winter so a lot of clouds so you don't really see on the left side it's pretty much just uh entire cloud but in december you still have something so the better side would be to compare something in the summer so i would say for example july uh, to maybe October, right? You still have some cloud, but uh, you see some empty area, right? So if you have empty, that means those uh, some of those are because of uh, cloud or others is not good, so it's masked out. And now take a look. 
right so on the left side here take a look at this snow and ice i'm not sure it is white uh no snow in 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 uh so on the left side it's uh july so i'm not sure why oh no it's december so december you have some snow and ice i'm not sure it's true or not but you need to look at the original sentinel 2 imagery to see if there's indeed uh, snow and ice but again like uh, monthly lane cover data set anywhere around the globe if you like right december so july because in, in summer you expect to see more vegetation compared to october right so this is how you can compare you can also do it by dating uh, but because uh um sentinel 2 does not have daily coverage so it, it probably doesn't work but you can do it by quarter let me see if it works uh might not work let me see i'm not quite sure if it doesn't work then uh, you can do it by month all right it works like january and then april july december so again let me try this one second quarter and the third quarter and so as you can see because by quarter you get a lot more imagery so now you see it appears to be kind of a complete coverage you don't see empty no data area so pretty nice and so for example the second quarter and compared to the third quarter i expect the July, the third quarter, to have a lot more vegetation because it's a summer, it grows a little bit, right? Yeah. Take a look. But I don't, I would not expect, for example, here, uh, the urban build-up area to change a lot because just one quarter. I'm not sure is it real or is it false. So this is how uh, it still need a lot of work to do vegetation, but you give you a rough uh lane cover classification pretty quickly and again you can export the data set if you want but i'm just showing you how you can create these kind of things to visualize very quickly without much effort so for now you need to run this one in jupyter notebook but i'm hoping to also create uh, another uh apps in here so they can just change some parameters and then you will be able to create time series for any location around the globe so stay tuned for another video uh for the web app and after you finish this, you are where you can click the close button at the lower right corner here. Close, so it's going to return to just the base map. And um, all right, so that's all for this uh, video, and I hope to see you in the next uh, video. Take care. Bye bye.